here to Derby City, and they got outrun all night long to the finish line, and we got a field stormer here in Louisville. The cards are flying high again. They are 6-0 and and just toppled top 10 Notre Dame. It was a sight that brought a tear to Irish eyes and froze Notre Dame hearts. Louisville's upset victory over the Irish last season ended Notre Dame's playoff hopes. Now, the Cardinals come to South Bend. Playoff hopes very much still alive for both of these two teams, and the Irish are seeking revenge. This is Louisville Notre Dame, and this is Shamrock Sports. And welcome to Shamrock Sports. My name is Ryan Murphy alongside Jacob Irons and Jimmy Collins. Star-studded crew here for the Irish Wear Green game in South Bend. Guys, how are we feeling this week? I'm feeling great. I'm sitting in the middle. I think this is the first time in my NDTV career that I've ever sat in the middle. I got JC to my left. I got Murph to my right. What more could a man want on a Friday <laughs> in South Bend? Now, guys, sobering to watch those pictures to start the show. You got to think for Notre Dame, that's going to be in the back of their mind. But how much will last year's game be lingering over this year's edition? It is everything right now. When you look at what this game has and the implications that it had from last year, it's tremendous. Because last year you lost, you lose 33 to 20 at LNM Stadium to a first-year head coach at Louisville and Jeff Brown. Yes, he was tested at Purdue and he had all this record. But once again, you lose to a first-year head coach in a place that doesn't necessarily have a football pedigree. It's always been basketball for the Cardinals. And for them, it was a big win for them. And the revenge factor has to play a factor because the, for the sheer fact, Jim, you look, Notre Dame had a potential to make the playoff last year when they went to Louisville. You lost to Ohio State, and then once again, you play the hypotheticals. If Ohio State wins out, wins the Big Ten, right. and they become the top seed. Notre Dame's one loss is to the top seed. You can sneak in at that fourth spot and be like, hey, our only loss is to them. But Louisville dashed that hopes almost automatically, and the hopes were ended before we even cut the turkey. And for Notre Dame this year, this is playoff run or bust. Not this playoff or bust. It's playoff run or bust. They have to preserve their chance here in September to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. This game really is everything. This is Notre Dame season. If they can win this ranked on ranked matchup here at home in front of a sold out crowd, this is, I really think this will propel them to the next level. The only chance they have for the rest of the season is to win out. And I think Marcus Freeman knows that. I think Marcus Freeman has done well in building his team up for big games like this. And I'm, the revenge factor will definitely be there. And I'm really excited. Yeah, well, let, let, let's hone in on that question. I mean, you guys kind of brought it up naturally, but for both these two teams, Notre Dame's kind of gotten their one stinker loss out of the way against NIU. Playoff hope still alive. Yeah. Louisville, contender in the ACC. What does this game mean in terms of playoff implications, implications for the rest of the season? Do both these teams need to win tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of just touched on it. For Notre Dame, this really is, every game is do or die at this point, and this is gonna be do or secure And For Louisville on the other side, they have more opportunities down the road. Not that Notre Dame doesn't. You're still gonna get the USC and maybe the Georgia Tech, Army's undefeated, Navy's undefeated, so you never, you never really know how the rest of that's gonna play out. But with Louisville, they still have Miami and on the road at Clemson. So this for them would be a signature road win to really boost them up and put them in a more comfortable position to make the playoff. And then obviously they could win the ACC. But with Notre Dame, this really is every week is a do or die scenario. And this is the big one that they need to get. Yeah, and for Notre Dame here, let's take a look at the analytics. I'm not a math guy by any means, but according to ESPN, if Notre Dame wins this game, they have a 50% chance to make the playoff, 50%. That is the same amount that you have if you flip a coin and call tails. That is really good for losing to an NIU team that, oh, I don't know, lost to Buffalo, the worst team in the MAC last week. So for right now, Notre Dame needs to understand this game is crucial. It is everything, it is anything that you could be thinking about. And on top of it, you have a bye next week. If you lose this game and go into a bye with a Notre Dame team that is already has two losses for a team that was supposed to be undefeated to this point that is the noise it's going to be deafening 
it is going to be hard to even be able to stay on campus if you're Marcus Freeman because the noise will be so loud. Marcus Treeman trying to avoid a third straight season where his team's playoff hopes are over in September. Yeah. A lot of hype around this game, guys, but perhaps the biggest news of the week, actually not on the football gridiron, but coming from the parquet floor, our Trey Cody and Peyton Lacey have more. What's up, Irish fans? I'm Peyton Lacey alongside Trey Cody with some big news. Five-star, number 14 in the country, Jalen Harrelson commits. Trey, what does this mean for the basketball team short-term and long-term moving forward? Well, Jalen Harrelson is a top 15 prospect in the country, number 14 on 247 Sports, number 10 on ESPN, five-star pretty much across the board. Not only is he the first five-star we've gotten in quite some time, he's the number one overall recruit Notre Dame men's basketball has ever gotten. He is a fantastic basketball player on the court. He moves very well off the ball. He played on the U-17 FIBA World Cup team this year for Team USA, where he averaged double-digit points on a stacked lineup. He shoots the ball very well. He moves well off the ball, like I already said, into open space. With a guy like Marcus Burton, if he's still here in a year or two, that is going to be a lethal duo. He adds so much versatility to this front court, and I absolutely love the idea of him potentially starting alongside a guy like Marcus Burton at the one, Sir Muhammad at the two, depending on how he plays this year, and then Jalen at the three. That is a three-headed punch that I don't think many teams in the country can compete with. Harrelson, besides his offensive prowess, also is a fantastic defender, and he has all the upside. He's 6'7", big wingspan, moves extremely well, cleans up the glass. He's going to add a lot to this men's basketball team, and he's also going to come to a lot of practices and a lot of games. He lives only about 30 minutes away from here. That was a big part of Micah Shrewsbury's pitch to him to come to Notre Dame over some of his competitors like Indiana and Michigan State. And Peyton, i got to ask, this is a guy that went to La Lumiere. He's from Indiana originally. What does this commitment mean for the entire state of Indiana for basketball? I, I think it's big for the state of Indiana moving forward because this is the mecca of college basketball. College basketball is here. And now that you have a school like Notre Dame recruiting at this high of a level with Micah Shrewsbury, they're going to go compete with Indiana, dare I say Purdue, who is in the national championship this year. Notre Dame is going to play for a state championship, per se. And when Indiana is better at basketball, the state – college basketball is better and so I, I just get chills thinking about it I'm ready to go for this year and I think moving forward Notre Dame is a team to look out for in the state of Indiana Micah Shrewsbury already recruiting heavily within his second season as the men's basketball coach is wonderful news for all of us Irish fans this past week we also saw a commitment from four-star Brady Kohler another guy top 150 in the country 6'8 power forward with some range Micah already has a fantastic 2025 class ranked as the number fifth in the country as of right now Going forward, this men's basketball team is going to be a joy to watch. They should be super entertaining and extremely competitive in a somewhat potentially lackluster ACC this year. I'm excited for the season ahead. I'm excited for the entire future. And as always, go Irish. And welcome back to Shamrock. Thanks, Trey and Peyton, for that great coverage. Exciting stuff yeah, going very. on for Micah Shrewsbury, guys. Hey, Micah Shrewsbury, this is the guy we all petitioned for. <laughs> He's here. I'm excited. He's driving the 40 miles. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what his team has for the future, and it looks really good with the recruits. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to watching Jalen Harrelson at Purcell very, very soon. Back to the big news of the weekend, though. Louisville and Notre Dame. Big matchup uh, with playoff implications for both these two ties. And kind of digging into the weeds here, guys. These two teams really match up quite well. It's strength versus strength. One of Louisville's strength is that run defense. Yeah, I mean, I think we all know that Notre Dame wants to run the ball, and they want to run the ball every play if they can. Yeah. <laughs> they use Jeremiah Love, J.D. Price, Aeneas Williams, and then even Riley Leonard, who could run for 150 yards a game. Notre Dame is able to do that. They would love it. But with Louisville, they have the, eight, the 18th best run defense in the country uh, going into this matchup. And so they're going to stack the box. They're going to try and slow Notre Dame down because if Notre Dame can run the ball, control time of possession, I think that that defense will be able to stifle them enough to where Notre Dame will have the ball for too long and Louisville will not be able to win. But there's one name on that Louisville run defense that really stands out, and that is preseason All-American Ashton Gillette, who last season – tallied 11 sacks, 14 and a half tackles for loss, and was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year runner-up. He has 23 career total sacks, and I really think that him going against a Notre Dame offensive line that has kind of 
got fans worrying the last couple of weeks with injuries at Purdue. Um, he's kind of primed for a breakout, it almost feels like, and hopefully it's not this weekend. But if there's one guy to watch on that Louisville defensive line, it is Ashton Gillette, and he's going to be all over that Notre Dame run game. Yeah, and it's really, it's going to be a question of Titan v. Titan for these two teams. These are the two rooms that are the best for their respective teams. And for Notre Dame, they have to lean into the rushing attack. You have to go to Love. You have to go to Price. Yes. But then you also have to go to Leonard here as well. But for Love, 46 attempts. He has four rushing touchdowns. He has 339 yards. This is a guy that can bust a move and bust out of there and get a touchdown pretty quickly. Texas A&M, that's how they won. It wasn't passing. It was the running game. That's what you have to lean on for him. And it's whether it's the price, whether it's love. And that's what you really need to have happen here for Notre Dame to really take that next step forward is because these aren't normal college runners. You talk about Glenn. These guys are top recruits for the NFL. You talk about love. Last week when they were going up against Miami, you had a guy in the press box for the Carolina Panthers I talked to and say, Love's the best player on both sides of the ball. He's the guy that everyone's here to come see. There's no one else for this Notre Dame team that you're like, eh, maybe. Love is everybody wants to get eyes on him because guess what? He's breaking tackles. He's breaking away from it. And that's going to be the key to success. However, but for this game, particularly for Notre Dame, you have to open Riley Leonard. Jake, what are you talking about? <laughs> We've, t we've seen him run every day. <laughs> exactly. This is the one game that you need him to run for. Louisville has no ability to maintain a mobile quarterback. You look at Jacks Jacksonville State, 100 yards for their quarterback. You look to Georgia Tech, 58 yards for Haynes King. And those are 58 yards that are out of nothing. It's just 58 yards of scrambling. Hey, I'm going to go get a first down. Hey, I'm going to go run this in now. And for them, they can't contain a mobile quarterback. And for Riley Leonard, Chuck Martin talked about it for Miami. You don't know what Riley Leonard's going to show up, and if he shows up the running way, Louisville has to prepare for a run in Leonard. Now, a lot of the talk, and I, and I understand that the emphasis on the ground game will be big, but a lot of the talk around this Notre Dame team has been the passing game, Jake. Okay, stop. Okay, okay. So <laughs> what we have here, folks, is a very decent conversation, right? So we have a combo about a quarterback that can't pass, right? And if we're an analysis show here on Notre Dame's campus, we're going to talk about passing, right? Yes. And that's why we bring in the film man, Ben Rohr. Boom. Ben Rohr is here to talk about passing. And for Notre Dame, you understand that you have to have a passing game to beat Louisville. Yep. But why is the Pittsburgh Steelers on my screen? Yeah, you might be wondering why Akersher Stadium is on your television right now. And that's because to take you to Notre Dame Stadium and talk about the passing game, I want to talk about the NFL, the Pittsburgh Steelers, what Arthur Smith is doing. Uh, the, I mean, the comparisons are obvious between Justin Fields and Riley Leonard. Reliant on his legs. The, the, the arm is never really what you want it to be. Yeah. I, there's, there's, there's many comparisons, it's obvious, between the two teams, really, in general. Yeah. Well, when you look at that, on top of it, you have a team right now for the Pittsburgh Steelers, first in defense yep. for the NFL. Yeah. Then you look at Notre Dame, oh my gosh, they're one of the only two teams alongside Georgia, Michigan, to limit their opponents to under 400 yards in total offense yep. in the past couple. So for Notre Dame, there's a lot of similarities here. Absolutely. So, and, and another similarity I want everyone to keep in mind goes right along with that. This team, these are two teams that are run first, theoretically. Yes. These are two teams that prepare for stacked eight-man box sets a lot. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to take you, what impresses me is what the Steelers are able to do when there isn't an eight-man box set. So let's look right here. So the Chargers are sending four, right? But if we watch this play right here, Justin Fields is able to drop back, get a little time, and bang, right as Calvin Austin catches the football. Look where the safeties are for the Chargers. You've got Derwin James all the way down here, terrified of George Pickens. He's down there, and then Notre Dame legend, Alohi Gilman for the Chargers, is off balance because he's worried about Pat, Pat Fryermuth hitting a slant, which had been so successful. This leaves the middle of the field completely open for Calvin Austin here. Let me let me get to my marker. Completely open for the for Calvin Austin. So let's let's watch the rest of this play. This allows Calvin Austin to just have one safety left to beat and he finds his way into the end zone for a Steelers score. And what's un important about this for Notre Dame fans? That's not a pass that's going 20, yep. 30 yards. Absolutely. That's a maybe a 15 yard pass that right now you look at, it's like, it's not too far downfield. It's a mid-range pass and that's what Riley Leonard can complete. Absolutely, so let's look. 
now at an Irish play that is really just sort of haunting all Notre Dame fans everywhere. So this is the first interception from the NIU game. Oh. Where Look at this play call uh, by Mike Denbrock. So look at Riley Leonard's options right here. Huh. <laughs> look at these options. Cooper Flanagan doubled. Uh, Jaden uh, Jay Greathouse here, and then I believe Harrison also. I mean, no one here is remotely close to open at all. So what you have to worry about is now... Your best option is the check down, Ben. Yeah. Your best option is the check down. And he's, you're losing yardage by passing it to him. Yeah, I mean, Leonard is just forced... And look at the decision that Leonard doing? is forced to make. Look at where he puts this ball. Oh, just right into just absolutely moss, just just covered Jaden Greathouse. And so that's what I'm looking for the Irish to do, is get innovative with the play calling to open up the middle of the field. They, there's no decoy plays that I'm seeing from the Irish right now where, you know, I have George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth are, are just pulling the safeties away, leaving that middle of the field open for a Calvin Austin type character, whoever that might be for the Irish, to really attack them vertically. And it's not a tough pass. It's, it's 15 yards. And this is just, I mean, watch this pass from the Steelers. Look at Leonard is never able to get into a rhythm. Look at this pass. It's just an automatic, you know, little out from Scotty Miller that lets Justin Fields get a rhythm. He gets comfortable in these new schemes that Leonard is just, you never are able to see that. And on top of that, you saw the pressure that was coming there. Yeah. You see the pressure that's provided to him. It's a quick out. It's a quick throw. We're talking about Madden quick slants here. Absolutely. Madden quick slants. <laughs> that's sort of what I'm... That's what I'm thinking about with that eight-man box set. This is an example of that, where you have all of these guys coming full force. This is what you're expected to see as the Steelers, as a Notre Dame, where the, the ground game is really what you're nervous about on the defensive side of the ball. So when that isn't there, you got to open up the middle of the field, like yeah. we saw in the first play. And when that is there, you got to get the ball out quick to allow your quarterback to get into some sort of rhythm. And Scotty Miller ends up breaking this tackle and going for just a beautiful first down and more. But that's really what I'm looking to see is that when there's eight in the box, you get the ball out quickly, let Leonard get a rhythm going on quick passes, which we see him miss some yeah. of those. And then when when that isn't there, you open up the middle of the field and attack vertically. Yeah, yeah that's what you have to do. You got to attack vertically, got to have those openings that are there for it. And we're going to see. This is two Siegfried Hall Ramblers coming together being like, let's put an offensive playbook together for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll find out if this is the play call. And the people that will actually be doing the play calling will be Tyler Reedy and Henry Lytle on the WVFI radio call. They're with us now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. We are here at Notre Dame Stadium previewing this Saturday's matchup between Louisville and Notre Dame, a top 20 contest in South Bend, along with Henry Lytle on Tyler Reedy. Pleased to be on the WVFI sports radio call coming up this Saturday afternoon. And Henry, we didn't expect it coming into the season, but this is now Notre Dame's biggest and toughest home game of the year. Yeah, it is. They're facing a number 15 team, Louisville, that's 18th in college football in yards per game. And they're going to be going up against this tough Irish defense, who actually is 18th in yards defended at, at, per game. And that that's, Notre Dame secondary is certainly going to bring some trouble for the Louisville Cardinals offense. Certainly, and there's a big revenge factor to this game. That's one of the top storylines coming in. Louisville bumped Notre Dame out of the college football playoff race last year with a 33-20 victory in early October. Notre Dame's back in, we think, the green jerseys. It's at least an Irish wear green game this weekend. And, well, last year that was the Ohio State game, another one of the three losses for Notre Dame. So the Irish have some things to set straight here this Saturday against the Cards. They certainly do, and this is a game that you have to win if you want a chance at the college football playoff. With Notre Dame's schedule this year, there's not going to be as many ranked games. So this is one that you have to win at home. It's going to be the biggest game. And the green jerseys, you know, losing to Ohio State on the last play, it's a really tough way to, to go out, as, especially also, you know, a few weeks followed by that Louisville away loss where they had five turnovers and really struggled to move the ball offensively. We'll see if this, this team can get it going. Right, and a big part of that could be getting the pass game going. Louisville knocked off Georgia Tech 31-19 last week, but gave up some shot plays through the air, over 400 total yards of offense for Georgia Tech and Haynes King. And now you're talking about another dual threat quarterback in Riley Leonard, who is still yet to really break out through the air. He's running the ball like crazy, but how important is the development and potential breakout of that passing game going to be this weekend? Well, so the Louisville Cardinals defense is, is 18th in rush defense. So they are, they are stout up front. So the question is going to be, can Riley Leonard throw the ball over the top? He's probably going to be seeing a lot of man coverage, which the Irish have kind of struggled to beat. You know, they struggle to throw the ball downfield against A&M. And even last week against Miami of Ohio, 
get really struggle to throw the ball downfield. And, and, you know, Leonard has only, he's averaging less than six yards of completion. So the question is going to be, can Leonard hit the big plays? You know, the Cardinals are a little weaker in that secondary. So if the Irish are able to find some momentum throwing the ball, I think this one's going to, going to turn in their favor. We'll see what happens coming up Saturday afternoon, 3.30 p.m., the kickoff time, as we'll be on the airwaves of WVFI Sports Radio. For Henry Lytle, I'm Tyler Reedy. Now back to the studio for more. And welcome back to Shamrock. Appreciate it, Tyler and Henry. You can listen to those guys on the call tomorrow, 3.30 p.m., wvfi.nd.edu. Back here in the second floor, Duncan Student Center with Jacob Iron and Jimmy Collins. Guys, we've talked about the Notre Dame offensive side of the ball. Louisville comes in pretty much polar opposites with a great passing attack. Yeah, this is a passing attack for Louisville that has a seventh year college player at the helm. Seventh year. He was at Oregon, Texas Tech, and now finds himself in the heart of the Bluegrass State in Louisville. And for right now, he's a dog. He is throwing balls that are absolutely impressive. And guess what? He's also got a ring on it, guys. He's married. He is not scared of anything Notre Dame can throw at him. He is connecting on passes that are just wide open. He is making the right reads. This is what happens when you run a play action. Watch this. Play action keeps it, throws it downfield, and he has an amazing receiver. It's a Kerry Brooks, an Alabama kickback that takes the P.I. and ultimately gets the touchdown. This is a guy that is threading the needle, finding places that ultimately shouldn't be found and is ultimately scoring on really good plays like that one right there and Jimmy Notre Dame's not scared by an air raid offense either oh no those highlights are, are very impressive <laughs> but when you have one of eh, they have the best secondary in the country Notre Dame yeah. secondary yeah. I'm not too worried you look at Notre Dame secondary you have Ben Morrison and Christian Gray starting on the edge but followed by Leonard Moore and now Carson Hobbs who's filling in for Jaden Mickey who just departed after last week's game and then on the back end, you have Xavier Watts and Adon Schuler, who have already made multiple contributions this year. And yes, you look, you see, wow, those are some good names. This passing defense is great. But then you look at the numbers, and they're only giving up a 46% completion percentage, which is the lowest in the country. And then on top of that, another lowest in the country, 11.75 receptions a game from, from the other teams. That secondary is suffocating, and I think they're going to show it on Saturday. And I... And let's be honest, I'm talking a big game for Tyler Shuck right here. But he hasn't played against a Notre Dame caliber defense. You look at Austin P. okay. You look at Jacksonville State, okay. You look at Georgia Tech, okay, they're reasonable. <laughs> Notre Dame, completely different category. We just talked about it. This is a team that has a defense that's national championship caliber. It is going to be something to monitor. On top of it, for Tyler Shuck, he's never played a road game yet for Louisville. Do they have the clap? Is the clap going to work? How are they going to hike the ball? They've had their first three games at home at LM Stadium. He's on the road for the first time. While we are expecting a lot of Louisville Cardinal fans to make the drive up, it is a really interesting characteristic to be, hey, I am throwing the ball well at home. It's very different if you can throw the ball on the road in a tough environment against tough teams that have tough defenders. Yep. Absolutely. And we talked about these two teams matching up strength against strength. This is a prime example. It, it's a prime, and you really need to lean on it. How do the Louisville Cardinals open the first drive? Do they want to lean on a run, or do they want to pass? The first drive is going to be telling. Louisville did send back some of those uh, tickets that they were alive, <laughs> yes. though, earlier yeah. they get in the week. Yeah. So we'll see. See what the environment is like at Notre Dame Stadium. Now, we've been having a lot of fun. <laughs> we're going to get to a really fun part of the show. Shambuki is next, but first... Uh, Caitlin Klein and Annie Papp have your Friday headlines. Hi everyone, my name is Annie Papp. And I'm Caitlin Klein. And we're here with your Friday headlines. This week, the ACC announced regular season conference schedules for both men and women, bringing Notre Dame slate into full view. The women will open conference play at Syracuse on December 12th. The men will open conference play at home against Syracuse on December 12th. Notre Dame students will be disappointed to hear that Notre Dame's marquee home game against North Carolina will take place on January 4th over Christmas break. Taking a look at in-season sports, Notre Dame women's soccer had their Irish wear green game last night against the NC State Wolfpack and tied 1-1. Senior Sophia Fisher scored the lone goal for Notre Dame, who are off to a 7-1 and 2 start and were ranked 16th in the latest coaches poll. On the men's side, look out for the game against the Clemson Tigers tonight at 7 p.m. in Alumni Stadium. 
The match will be a replaying of last year's College Cup final when the Tigers beat Notre Dame for the national title. Clemson are off to a 5-1-2 and two start and ranked 12th in the country while Notre Dame is ranked 17th. Finally, the volleyball team just split a home and home but are 7-1 and, and have had their best start in a number of seasons. The Irish will host their Irish Wear Green game coming up tonight against Stanford at 6.30 p.m. Tuning now to some athletic department news. Monday, Notre Dame announced Rally, a new university-run NIL initiative. In a press release Monday, the university wrote, Rally is a lifestyle agency for the next iteration of collegiate athletics, dedicated to creating meaningful NIL opportunities for Notre Dame student athletes. The initiative will be steered by a six-person board of directors, which includes Notre Dame alumni and media personalities, Jordan Cornette and Hannah Storm. Rally will focus on providing sales, marketing, business operations, and unique experiences for athletes. Finally, back to some football news. In his press conference Monday, Irish head coach Marcus Freeman announced that cornerback Jaden Mickey will redshirt for the rest of the football season, and he plans to enter the transfer portal. Coach Freeman commented on Mickey's decision and said, I'm not in his shoes. I don't know what's going on in his life. This is what he said is best for him and his future. Mickey has played four games this season, but will be eligible to play for two more years at a different school, considering the fact that he's redshirting for the rest of this season. Looking ahead to this weekend, tight end Cooper Flanagan will be out for the upcoming game against Louisville due to an ankle injury. Flanagan played four snaps in Notre Dame's victory against Miami before exiting to the bench. That's it for your news today. I'm Manny Pat. And I'm Caitlin Klein. Enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back. Thanks, Caitlin and Annie. Congrats to Annie and also Peyton early in the show, both of them. Their first segments here for us. Let's clap it up. Shamrock Let's Sports. Clap it up. Let's go. Love it. We welcome Ben Rohr back. We're standing over here. You know that's time. It's only that can only mean one thing. It's time for Shambookie, one of our favorite parts of the show. We've been doing okay. We went two of four last week as a group for the on-air cast. Yeah. We bank a couple weeks ago against uh, NIU. So, Jimmy, let's start with you. Who you got this week? Well, I'm taking my pick down with college game day down to Tuscaloosa. Right. And I know you may be thinking Alabama home game. I'm sure you remember last year's clip, Pat McAfee famous in the SEC championship game. Give me Alabama. Well, I don't care. Give me the dogs. <laughs> Georgia is going to roll in there and throttle Alabama this weekend. I trust Kirby Smart and Georgia more than I trust Kalen DeBoer. And I think Alabama's great. I think Milrow's great. I think this Georgia team is different. I think they're going to be playing angry this year after the way last season ended, how they got left out of the playoff. I think they could have won the national championship last year had they snuck in as that four seed. And I, I do think that Georgia takes this one and gets a big road win. Wow. Yeah. Money line. Yep. Wow. Money line bet on Sham Bookie. Money line. I, wow. I don't okay. think I can follow that because not only do you have big game, you have like big pick. You're all in on Georgia. I'm all in, yeah. Wow. National champion? Do Georgia, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. so okay. Wow. double picks for you. Wow. You, yes. you just picked Sham Bookie out of that. That was a plan, Jim. <laughs> that was a plan. My bad. Uh, I, I can't really follow that, but I got I got a nice little pick in the 10 p.m. FS1 slot tomorrow night. <laughs> Washington State going on the road to Boise State. Now listen, I don't think Washington State's going to win this game. But the line is, I think, six and a half? Yes. Six and a half. Hey, thanks for the graphic. I made that. <laughs> <laughs> line is six and a half. I don't think that's enough. I like this Washington State team. They're angry this year after getting really booted out of the Pac-12, right? They're rebuilding the Pac-12. Um, beat Washington. I think they're coming in with an attitude after uh, avoiding a loss to San Jose State in overtime. Uh, they're undefeated. Boise State already got a loss. Give me the Kooks this weekend on the road. Wazoo. Wazoo. <laughs> Pullman. Pullman's going to be erupting. But I'm going to tell you a place that already is expecting to erupt, and that's Happy Valley. Let's say Penn wow. State, Illinois. Illinois plus 18? Are you kidding me? It's a top 25 matchup. That's steep. Are you serious? Penn State has problems. But their biggest problem is Illinois. They literally went into Lincoln. This is college football. This is college football, Lincoln, Nebraska. And they put them down in overtime. This is not against nobody. This is a Nebraska team that looked like they were going to have it going for the first time since Scott Frost. And they are going to come out there and they're going to play their best game possible. But on the other side for Penn State, everyone's like, oh my God, they took care of Kent State. They look, <laughs> what happened to Bowling Green two weeks prior? 
dude, run the ball in the opening drive that you're watching right now. It's pass, it's pass, it's pass. It is a Bowling Green Falcons team that shredded the secondary of Penn State all day long. And we're talking about a quarterback, Lou Allmeyer, for Illinois that has 10 touchdown passes, no picks. Not one, nada, zip, zero. This is a guy that giving 18 is about the sure as shoot bet that you can have <laughs> on this program. 18 <laughs> in Happy Valley, mark it. Family friendly program. Family Give me the Danny Lions. I, I personally, I don't think Illinois can lose a game with those helmets. No, exactly. Just, I can't. just think they're beautiful. They That's all. Thank you. I think I've got maybe the worst pick <laughs> ever. I've, I've, I don't go check my record on Shem Bookie because it's not great. But this week, wow, the, wow. Hus the Huskies, okay. the Huskies head into <laughs> NC State. Two teams that are really struggling. Uh, the Huskies, you know, our, our favorite team. Uh, they lost to Buffalo last week, and NC State looked like a bit of a mess against Clemson. But I think the I think the Wolfpack really hits the reset on this one. They've got a freshman quarterback at CJ Bailey who really impressed me at the Clemson game. He was taking big hits, he was extending plays, he was making sort of confident passes in a really tough place to play. I, so I think that's really gonna get it done because uh, the NC State run def or the NIU run defense has been really good this season. So I think they're just gonna attack him vertically and that's gonna be enough to get by the Huskies. But I mean, really just two struggling teams and I could I was thinking either way on this pick. So I kind of went, you know, maybe the, the way that was less expected to turn my luck here this week. Uh, give me give me the wolf pack to cover. Six and a half. I don't know. A little reverse psychology. Wow. Yeah. wow. Right? Isn't that the best That's way to way bet? To <laughs> the yeah, best yeah. way to bet is reverse he's digging, psychology. Hey, he's digging. He just keeps digging a hole. Fair, no, no. Fair, like, I think I'm building the I ladder this <laughs> week, boys. I'm getting out of there. We're into the home stretch here on Shamrock Sports. One more block to go. We'll give our picks for the highly anticipated game in Notre Dame Stadium tomorrow. Louisville and Notre Dame. Stick with us here on Shamrock Sports. Hey everybody, join us at Shamrock Sports after sunrise at 3.30 for everything you need to know about Notre Dame athletics. That's 3.30 right here on NDTV every week. Welcome back to Shamrock everybody. Ryan Murphy, Jimmy Collins, Jacob Irons, Ben Rohr here to give our picks for tomorrow. Notre Dame and Louisville, 3.30 p.m. on Peacock tomorrow your subscription there is a student discount so if if, if you're new <laughs> shameless plug uh, <laughs> if, if you're new to the program we do keep track so let's take a look at the leaderboard now and I'm not just saying that because I'm stop, up close to the stop, top stop, stop. which I am uh, Trey Cody oh, Ben Roar I love I love that I have the same amount of points as about seven other people but I'm listed <laughs> first like I'm in third place you're on air you're on air this uh, week I'll take it Ben Roar's on it. there I'm on there Jimmy you got one point notable absence Jacob Irons uh, has not picked correctly this year is that correct yeah, I haven't picked one game right. It's because yeah. we didn't pick the Purdue game. I would have gotten another point there. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking 66 to 7. Right. <laughs> we did not pick the Purdue game, so if you're wondering how the calculations work, that is true. We are picking the Louisville game. Jimmy, let's start with you. What do you got tomorrow? I'm, I'm very, very excited for this game. I think the Notre Dame's going to come out fast. I think when Louisville stacks the box, I think they're going to get the ball early, or get the ball out early, kind of like Ben talked about. I think they're going to utilize Riley Leonard's legs. I really think this game sets up very well for Notre Dame. And with that being said, I'm going to take Notre Dame to win 23 to 13, cover the six and a half point spread, and get a win that makes fans feel very, very good. And yeah, that six and a half point spread has been something that we've kind of been talking yeah. about throughout the week. Nobody's really sure how to feel about it. I'm going to say Notre Dame doesn't cover the spread. Uh, I got 21 20, one point victory for the Irish. I want to see a classic tomorrow, guys. I want to see a game winning field goal kicked at the end. I think these two teams. I mean, we've talked about it the entire show. It's strength versus strength for these two teams. There's no reason to think that they won't match up well against each other. I don't see it being decided by anything outside of six and a half, certainly. I don't even see it being decided by six and a half. I do think the Irish pull it out, though, set up a uh, interesting, interesting latter part of the season here in South Bend. Yep. Give me Notre Dame 21-20. Yeah, the hype's there. Like, let's, let's be real about this. So, for Notre Dame, they have won 13 of their last 15 games against ACC opponents. Louisville on the road is 6 of 13 in their last 19 road games. Notre Dame is 3 and 0 when playing on Peacock. When Paul <laughs> Burmeister is on the call, as he is for NBC, Notre Dame is 2 and 0. It's the ninth consecutive sellout at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame, and with the six point favor, should be the pick. It's not. Louisville will take care of it. it there's problems for right now for Notre Dame that are just unmatched. 
and I think Louisville's going to come in. Jeff Brom's got his stuff together. I think this is a Louisville Cardinal team that's going to come flying high out of South Bend heading back to the Bluegrass State. Department pessimist. Yeah. I am the department yes. pessimist. So I think there is a potential Notre Dame wins. I really do. Sure. I think it's 75-25 Notre Dame wins, but their 25 okay. is too great for me to pass up and pick somebody to have it all be Notre Dame up here. Ben, sure. you're passing up the 75? I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to go with the Irish. I mean, just imagine if that NIU game was on Peacock, though, right? I mean, different show we're having. No, but I'm going to go with the Irish, 24-21. I think it's going to be really close again as well, but I just, I would, I do, I really, this is the one that the Irish win. I think, honestly, in my head, they, like, lose to Georgia Tech or something in a way and it really goes off the rails but this is the one they get done I think I'm, I'm praying that Freeman has the boys ready that that he's just out of his mind for this game because this is the biggest game of the year by tenfold and I think I think this is the one that they get at home this is going to be the one we'll will it, will it be? They got I, the I, I don't know, I don't, know. I don't think so we thought Texas A&M was a big one we get another one, another big one on tap tomorrow. Notre Dame will be wearing the green jerseys. Yes. They announced that earlier this week. The captain shows he'll wear them. So will there be some green jersey magic for the Irish? We have less than 24 hours now to find out. Thanks for tuning in to our show. For Ben Moore, Jacob Irons, Jimmy Collins, my name's Ryan Murphy, and for all of our fantastic crew behind the scenes, we have a team of wonderful people here. Without them, none of this would be possible. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your Friday afternoon and your weekend, and go Irish. Thank you.